Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our program this evening. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is the Dine Around Downtown Cooking at Home edition. Uh, and this is our second one, so we're really happy that you guys are able to join us. I'm going to kind of talk for a little bit and give you some of the rundown of what's going to happen today while we let people enter the room. Uh, my name is Ron Dijon. I am the event manager at the Downtown Alliance. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Downtown Alliance is the business improvement district for Lower Manhattan. And what we do and have been proudly doing for 25 years now is helping to make downtown a better, uh, safer, cleaner, and uh, a more vibrant place for people to live, work, and visit. And one of the ways we do that is by providing support to local businesses. And um, that's why we're here tonight. Uh, this program is part of our ongoing efforts to help local restaurants who have been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, which reminds me, I want to remind everyone that's coming into the room that uh, you guys at home can also support today's featured restaurant, Nokoria Wall Street, by donating to their GoFundMe page, which goes directly to their staff. Uh, it's their employee fund. So uh, I will share a link to that with all of you right now in the chat room. There you go. You should get that. Uh, so yeah, so if you guys can donate anything you can, $5, $50, $500, uh, it will really help them out. Um, okay, so before we actually officially begin, a few housekeeping things that I need to share with all of you. The um, cooking demo is being recorded and we will be sharing a video link to everyone who signed up uh, to the program. So you'll get that sometime tomorrow. Uh, questions, uh, if you guys have questions during the demo, we ask that you put it in the um, Q&A feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen if you're using your desktop or laptop. Uh, if you're using a phone, a tablet, or an iPad, then you can uh, tap your screen once and it should appear on the top right corner, okay? Now the chat box, like I've been doing, is where we will be sharing uh, links, helpful links, uh, websites, and any detailed information uh, that we, we can share with you guys throughout the program. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, I'm gonna share one more link with you now that I've said that. <laughs> and this is for everyone who is uh, cooking along with us this evening or uh, might check out the video over the weekend and cook along over the weekend and try out these recipes. Uh, this is the contest that we're, we're uh, offering, which is post your plate. So if you guys are cooking and you take a picture of your plate and you put it on Instagram, be sure to tag the Downtown Alliance at Downtown NYC and hashtag Dine Around at Home. And you can enter to win a 30 minute private session virtual class uh, cooking class with our chef Michele, who is our guest chef tonight. Okay, that's it on my list. Uh, we are so happy you guys can join us. Our next one will be on July 9th with Taim, but enough about that. Uh, let's get our program started, shall we? Without further ado, I am very happy and pleased to welcome your host, uh, award-winning chef and author and a really, really cool guy, Rocco Despirito. Ron Dizan, thank you so much. I appreciate the warm and friendly introduction. Uh, so I just want you guys to know as you, as you come into the room that the Downtown Alliance is a private-public partnership. Uh, the owners of property in the downtown area create a uh, business improvement district. They all contribute their own private funds, and there are also some grants and funds from the state and the city, uh, and they partner together with uh, people like Ron and Shelly and all the people behind the scenes at the Downtown Alliance to improve the quality of life in the downtown area. They've been doing this for 25 years, and uh, I'm sure all of you can uh, give them some, some uh, props for the work they've done. Because uh, I don't know about you, but I've definitely seen change in downtown in the last 25 years. Uh, it's safer, it's cleaner, it's, it's a lot more fun uh, and vibrant than it used to be. And uh, of course, uh, as we, come, we work away from uh, one challenge to another, like we're doing right now, uh, it's, it's more and more important that we have partners like the Downtown Alliance to get us through these challenging times. Speaking of challenging times, uh, I'm, I've seen a lot of restaurants open in the last week since our last uh, live uh, cook at home demo. And uh, the streets are starting to become populated with people and there's more traffic. So the city is coming back to life, thanks to people like you. So thank you so much for participating in this 
virtual demo as well as going out to enjoy the restaurants that are open. Uh, there's a lot of outdoor dining all of a sudden. I haven't seen this, this much outdoor dining in New York City uh, in, in a long, long time. I have a feeling there's a little stretching going on when it comes to outdoor terraces and no one's enforcing anything. So it's great. Go out there and sit on, in a nice comfortable table. This will probably be one of the only times you can uh, sit at a table six feet away from anyone in New York City. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Downtown Alliance, uh, downtownny.com. Uh, the, there are links in the chat box for you. Um, so our, our chef today is uh, a friend and I'm a big fan. He's from the part of Italy that I'm from, Naples, which as I was telling everyone before we got online, means uh, that you know the culture and you know you can have fun and you know you can joke around and no one will ever get upset. Na Napolitano people are very specific. The culture is very specific. And it doesn't matter if you're from, you're from Naples today or 100 years ago, for sure you've got a sense of humor and for sure you know how to cook and how to eat. And uh, our, next guest, our next guests are no exception. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Michele and Anisa Uliano. Uh, Michele, Chef Michele is the man behind the ovens at Luzo's Group, a collection of Southern Italian restaurants that serve up creative spins on classic Napolitano dishes. It says Neapolitan in the script, but I like to say Napolitano, it's just so much fun. Uh, the NYC restaurant Luzo's Pizza has amassed a cult following in the East Village since 2004. And since then, Michele has received many awards and accolades and opened several other restaurants in New York City, including Ovest Pizza, Pizzoteca in Chelsea, Di Michele in Tribeca, and of course, Gnocchia Wall Street, Gnocchia Wall Street, which basically means Gnocchi Palace. Uh, Michele, are you there? Anissa, are you there? We are here. Hello, how are you? Let's see if we can find there he is, Michele. Come stai? Bene. This will be Come the last stai? Italian that we speak because we, we don't want to be the only people to know what we're talking about. But uh, it feels like Hello. I'm talking to a brother or to a cousin. I can't hear you right now, Michele, but uh, maybe it's just a little technical difficulty. But I know Michele is in the kitchen of gnocchieria. By the way, the word gnocchi uh, is challenging for a lot of people to pronounce, including myself. So. Here's a great way to remember it. Michele, tell me if you agree. No, the word no, N-O, and the word key, K-E-Y. If you say no and key together really fast, gnocchi, it sounds like gnocchi. What do you say, Michele? Gnocchi, gnocchi, gnocchi. Can you guys hear him? Michele, are you there? Yes. Sorry about that, Michele. Sorry about that, Nisa. I'm not sure what happened. But uh, it's nice to see you, nice to talk to you. Michele, was I right about the Napolitan culture? Did you hear what I was saying? It's like meeting a, f a member of your family whenever you meet someone from the same uh, part of Italy. Uh, Wando. Wando. You think so? I know you, you. Oh, can you hear me now? He's saying that uh, being Napolitano is uh, like being with the family, oh, a cousin, yes. and brother. Oh, yes, familia. The gnocchi is a family, is a family. When you home and make gnocchi, it's only with the family. That's a good point. Gnocchi is a very yes. uh, homemade dish and something you make yes. with family. Of course, something we love to buy in restaurants and something you're very good at. Uh, don't forget, this is Dine Around Downtown, cooking at home edition, part of the Downtown Alliance's mission to support the restaurant industry. Today, we are supporting Gnocchieria's employee GoFundMe. Uh, Michele, can you tell us about the recipients and the beneficiaries of your GoFundMe? The beneficiaries are our employees. And okay, so we um, support Nyokaria staff we, directly. Correct, yes. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, when you're donating to this GoFundMe, you're donating to help support staff members that have been out of work for almost four months uh, who are hopefully returning to work tomorrow. Is that right, Anissa? Yes, we are starting tomorrow. We're very excited that we're opening um, the rooftop tomorrow for outdoor seating. So we're Which incidentally excited. allows allows cigar smoking, just in case you're into that kind of thing. Nyokeria uh, <laughs> Wall Street, that is the location. Uh, we'll put the address in the chat box, but uh, needless to say, they are um, 
they have a big gnocchi menu. And uh, today, Michele is going to show us how to make three different types of gnocchi. So, Michele, please feel free oh, to start oh. at any time. Yeah, let me know when you're ready. We start. I am ready. Gnocchi. I'm ready to start. Okay. The only one thing you need to make for gnocchi: potato and schiaccia patate. A ricer, a potato ricer. So you need a potato and a potato ricer. No, ricer, yes. This is very important. Can you show, can you show us the ricer again or the, mulli, no, the moulinette? This is, a, this is a ricer, you know, it's from the restaurant. But yes, yes. When you eat the, the home, is more easy. Yeah, so we call this no. a food mill or a moulinette or a food ricer. Yes. Uh, they're really inexpensive and very effective at making anything with potatoes. So yes, we're, I, I, I think you can buy less than $19, you can buy one of those. Can you I show know. us how it works? <laughs> okay. First, clean the potato, the skinny. Okay. Well, first you have to cook the potato, right? Yes, I'm sorry. You how, cook how the potato. You cook I no broil uh, potato. I it's hope very important, I bake guys. In the potato. I bake in the potato, okay? Okay. For exactly one hour. Okay. For the temperature? What temperature? 500 for one hour. Wow, okay. And so an it's hour. A pretty high heat. Yes, he's ready. Okay. So the potato is baked, uh, not boiled, and that is so you don't draw out the starch? Yes, make the potato, it go cold. Peel it the potato, the skinny. You see me, no? Yes, we see you. Uh, and so when the potato is cold, it peels really easily. I know that from experience. Yes. Take it off with the skinny, the potato. Okay. Okay, remove the skin. You put in the schiaccio patata. Put it in the food mill. The schiaccio patata. Schiaccio patata. <laughs> you know? And you turn it and clockwise. You, go down. you know what to use. You I know, but let's show everybody what happens underneath. Yeah. So what it does is it forces the potato through a disc or a die that has small yeah. holes or big holes or medium holes, and you end up with essentially uh, little strands of rice potato. Now, sometimes this device is uh, a little tricky. It likes to play with you. So if you find yourself having to reassemble it after your first turn, it's okay. It happens to all of us. Sometimes the spring just pops out of place. So uh, gnocchi is made from flour and from potato, and sometimes people put eggs in it. I'm curious to see if Michele no, does that. Our, our gnocchi is uh, like a uh, vegan, okay? It's, it's vegan, no okay, eggs. great. It's no eggs, no? Our gnocchi are so, so uh, vegan, no eggs. Vegan, no egg, yep. okay, no dairy? No, no, only the sauce. Okay. Incidentally, you can follow Gnocchiria at Instagram, uh, at Gnocchiria Wall Street, and you can follow Chef Michele on Instagram at Michele Uliano 19. Michele Uliano 19. And by the way, our uh, camera person is his wife, Anissa. Hello, Anissa. Anissa. Hello. Thank you for your, thank you for your hard work. <laughs> I love that you did not choose to use a tripod. You're being very brave. And your hand's going to hurt a lot at the end of this. It will. It will. Okay. You so he's preparing the gnocchi mix. And while he's doing that, we're boiling water, of course, because that's how we cook gnocchi first. We boil it, boil it in salted water. How's the, how's the gnocchi mix going? It's coming together. He's okay. Cool. He's going through a lot of gloves. There no. he is. <laughs> <laughs> did, my you, did you buy those gloves on sale or what? <laughs> I broke my gloves. By the way, in Italy, I've never seen a gloved person making food ever. I and there know, is I never, know. ever a problem with the food. I it's know. incredible. Okay, after you squeeze the potato. Right? Okay. You force the potato through the food mill. Yes. If you, you don't mind, Anissa, if we could see the potato close up, it would be really helpful, I think. So th those are little protrusions of cooked potato that have come yes. through the medium disc or the large or the small disc, the small This is on one the portion. This is one portion. Okay. One plate. One portion, one plate. Got about it. 250 gram of the gnocchi. 
Sure, okay. so about 10 ounces of gnocchi. Yes. Any, any, any pound uh, the potato, you need to use 65% of flour. So for a pound of potato, 65% flour. The ratio is 65 to 35? Yes. Potato to flour? Okay. Yes. Okay, so it's, it's almost three quarters p potato. Yes. yes. Got it. The more, it the more potato, the better, right, Michele? Yes, yes, yes. So people you who know, make really delicious gnocchi make very light gnocchi. I'm sure you all have. Like gnocchi, yeah, less of flour. Okay, I know you use yeah, eggs, I know you use all this stuff. So he's, he's not using eggs, he's not using uh, anything. I think he just put a little bit of olive oil in there and he's probably gonna put a little salt in there. I lost your audio again, guys. Hello? Yes, now I can hear you. Now I can. Hello? So, so you're kneading it like a dough? He's basically kneading oh, it like a pasta dough. He's, yes, I can. Tell dime, dime, Michele, dime che fai. Hello. Can you hear us? See. Si. Yes, oh, yes, we can. Okay. Dime, Dime che fai. Potato flour, a little extra virgin of olive. Okay. okay. You put a little salt. Very okay. nice. And you put all together. Got it. Okay. And you knead it like a pasta dough. Yeah. You put all Not together. Not as much. Pasta dough. Okay. And you feel when uh, almost is ready in the hand. How, how does it feel? How does it feel when it's ready? It should feel all compact. Compact, okay. Yeah, all compact. Does it, does it feel like you can put your fingers through it easily or is there is there resistance? Very easily, look. I don't push too okay. much. It's very easy. Okay. You see? So, it's not very dry. Not so dry. It's a wet dough. And yeah. you're, are you trying to develop gluten or not? Well, I'm sorry, I know uh, you. Are, you. Are you trying to develop the gluten? The protein in the in the flour or no? No. It's okay. A, yeah, it's a regular flour with the gnocchi. But regular somebody want to do a gluten free, gluten free gnocchi. Uh huh. You put rice uh, rice flour. That's it. Okay. It's coming the gluten free gnocchi. A uh, very very soft. The dough is ready. You leave it for two, three, four minute okay it's go more compact okay maybe something on top like this after five okay minutes. so so cover with a towel or something okay and then a big yeah. knife after five minutes you start to cut a little dough you see inside yes show us close it's up these are all compact okay so no not a lot of big holes no air yeah, and, it's, no. and it's definitely very moist. It's not dry. Yes. Put a little flour, you know, sticky. Okay. And start to put around. When okay. you go put around, go very strong. No, no scare. No scare. As long as you never make a lot. You know? Okay. Don't, don't be afraid of the dough. Push it, yeah, no push it and roll it until it's very long. i show you Shut. again. Look, you see? Okay. Put it together. This is a master class. Everybody pay attention. Look at this. You have to put together and you go one shot. Don't be, you see? Don't be afraid. You, you can't make, break it. When you make a roll, try and make all the same sides. You could go all it together. You see? Yes. I see it. They look beautiful. See? What about uh, what about using a piping bag, Chef? Is it okay to use a piping bag to make it a little no. easier for people at home? If you go too sticky, you need to make the dough very soft. Okay. I don't like it. It's he doesn't like it. Different in the North Italy, he call uh, he call uh, no, uh, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> we have a we have a couple of questions, Chef, uh, sure. from an anonymous attendee. What kind of flour? I think you use all-purpose white flour, all -purpose white wheat flour. flour. Okay, got it. So all-purpose flour, and if you want it to be gluten-free, you should use rice flour. Rice flour, yes. 
Okay. Is it fully cooled at this point, Chef? When? Uh, el freddo a questo when, momento? I'm sorry? La pasta. La pasta è freddo a questo momento? Sì, sí, sì. Sí, questo è freddo, sì. Sí. Okay. So, yes, it is cool. Cool to the Lo touch. I wouldn't, cool. it's not cold like from a fridge, but it's cool. Yeah. It's room temperature. Room temperature. There room is more. Okay. Got and it. this is too cold. It's very hard to work in your but chef, chef is it okay? Okay. Yeah. When you use a rice flour, the percentage go a little more up. Okay. Okay. So when you use wheat flour, it's 65, 35 potato yeah. to flour. At least the five percent or more. Okay. So when you use rice flour, it's 70 percent yes. uh, more flour or more potato? More flour. More flour. Okay. So it becomes 60, 40 potato yes. to flour. Those are the ratios. So four parts to three. Uh, no, I don't think my screen is black, Gina. I think, uh, hopefully you can see me. Uh, Chef, we have uh, Karen who's looking for a link. Karen, we will send that to you. And Erin uh, Weissman wants to know if she's making one portion, where does she stop and freeze the, the other half? Yes, it's impossible. Freeze it. At what point? Uh, que momento se, se separar momento? la pasta? Explícale que una patata es una persona. Ah, okay. Rocco, one potato, yes. one potato about, uh, you know, regular potato, not too small. Show them the yeah. size. One potato with the percent of the flour is coming good plate gnocchi for one person. Okay, so one, this is a, grand. and this is an Idaho baking potato, right? A G pot yes. potato? Okay, yes. so one potato per person, essentially. Yes. You'll get a nice big portion. Yes. Uh, of, right. Uh, chef, someone wants to know if you can use double zero flour. Yes, it's possible. It is possible to do that. So Are that's Roberta, four, four Roberta four and an anonymous attendee. Should the dough be elastic? Elastico or no? The dough, yes, it's elastic. elastic. You need to go elastic, as no, you never make a, a little bit, round very long. much elastic or very little? Be between, between, uh, between. In between. So like uh, pasta or bread dough? Uh, like more bread. Elastic. More like bread. Okay, so, so pretty elastic. Yes. So, so you are building some gluten strands and that, that protein is what's going to hold it all together, I guess. And that's yes. why you don't need eggs. And you don't want like extra virgin and put it all together. Amazing. Amazing, chef. Il lamido. Come si chiama? Rocco, il lamido sí. della patata. It... The starch. The starch of the potato? Oh. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, Rocco, you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. So what he was saying is, you know, when you bake the 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 potato, it stays it's dry, but lamito, once lamito, lamito, el lamito, tu sabes lo que lamito. El lamito de la patata. Okay, we'll figure that out. They put it together. Anyway, let's go this one. Let's go cut the gnocchi now. Okay, let's do it. Okay. The cutting gnocchi, we need to try and make all the same size. You see when we broil is coming up all together. Okay, okay. I go slow. Okay. You see? So about a half inch each? Uh, about, yeah. Half an inch. About yeah. a half an inch. They look okay. like little pillows. The, it's not about yeah. the size of the gnocchi. You want to make a long gnocchi, it's fine. All long. Okay. All long. Okay. All long. No one long okay. and one, one short. You understand? It's a very personal the gnocchi, how big you want. Okay. Okay. So the size is entirely up to you, the shape pretty much up to you. And uh, do you decorate the gnocchi? You use a paddle or you don't? A fork? After? Hold on one second. After this one, is a two thing is a two two different things for making gnocchi. I make it like this, very simple, yes. very square, regular. A lot of okay. people, a lot of people. When I am a baby, my mommy making me play. I go play okay. like you know, you see. Yes, like this. So now he, what he's doing looks very simple. He makes it look very easy, but this takes a lot of practice. <laughs> This is something every every mom in Italy can do in their sleep, every but it takes fifty years to learn. Yeah, 
This is one and time. What, what do you call one. that shape, Chef? This one? This one, finger gnocchi. Okay, got it. Why have a fork and gnocchi? Okay. So okay. finger gnocchi and fork gnocchi. This is one style. You can leave it looking like a pillow. Mm -hmm. Make sure that when you cut it, whatever size you want, they're even. Okay. This is, this is a knife in gnocchi, like a standard, you know? Okay, like yeah. These are the ones that look and like we have a fork in gnocchi, you know? Chef, how many, how much flour for one pound of potato? 65%. 65%. So chefs like to use formulas, not, not go by pounds and, and so, if you have a pound of potatoes, a pound of dough, 65% of it should be potatoes and 35% of it should be flour. You can do the math. Okay, show us the fork gnocchi again, chef. Sorry, I was talking. Yes. Give me one second, I cut it for you. All right, so that's a fork decorated gnocchi. So sometimes gnocchi have the little ridges, sometimes yeah. they don't. That's usually a decision you make when you decide what sauce it's gonna go with. My, the best one is a finger gnocchi, a cut gnocchi. Okay. Like the fork gnocchi is more like a factory gnocchi, you understand? Uh, right, more like a factory more, gnocchi, got it. I like got more it. house gnocchi. So Julie Donald, to answer your question, Chef Michele said, how long and thick the gnocchi are completely up to you. His were about a half an inch long and they look like perfect little squares, uh, but it's uh, really up to you. Chef, how do we make the sauces now? The sauce, okay. We finish with the gnocchi now. Yes. Let's go start though. He's a, in a, in a Campania, Naples. He's a yeah. very famous gnocchi. It's a Sorrentina sauce. It's like a marinara sauce with a lot yes. of basil. Salt, with a lot pepper, of basil, okay. Salt, pepper, and mozzarella cheese. Fresh. Wow. Oh, my cheese. God, that sounds amazing. Okay. So is that uh, fior, fior di latte or fior mozzarella di, di buffalo? Okay. So no, cow's milk it's mozzarella. Good with a lot of cheese. It's uh, good with fior di latte. It's good with buffalo mozzarella, too. Okay. A little parmesan cheese when you finish. Okay, okay. a little parmesan or Got it. See. Let's go see uh, what you cook now. Okay, let's do okay. that. The water is broiled. When the water is broiled, we put in gnocchi. So okay. salted water, of course, right? Salt and the water, that's it. Yes. That's Looks like he's got about four quarts, three quarts of water the, boiling. About two minutes, the gnocchi coming up. When the gnocchi coming up, it's ready. I Amazing, show you. I love it. They tell you when they're done. Gnocchi and nudi, a lot of pastas that are made with potatoes and vegetables float when they're done because their density changes as they cook. You just have to be patient and let it, let it cook and let them rise to the top. And then when they get to the top, it's okay to leave it there a the little time, bit. They don't really overcook. The time is the gnocchi is a cookie. We prepare the sauce. Okay, so we're going to start the sauce. Okay. Yes, chef, this is a marinara or passato or okay. a full, it's una salsa di pomodoro. This is a passato di pomodoro. It's okay. only salt inside the olive extra virgin olive. Okay. Salt, extra virgin olive oil and yes. pure tomato. We put in Sorrentina plate a lot of basilico. It? Yes, a lot of basil. You see the gnocchi starting to pop up? You see the gnocchi? Yes, yes, it's almost yes, red. I can. Beautiful. Okay. That's such a wonderful sight. It brings me home to grandma's house immediately. I, little, I remember. We put a little pepper, black pepper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little more salt. Okay. At the time, the sauce is ready, the gnocchi is ready too. And we start to put the gnocchi in the sauce. Beautiful. So you scoop the gnocchi out of the water. You don't drain 
the water it's and it. dump the gnocchi. Two minutes. No, we don't. We just scoop it right out. Got it. Two minutes. How, fra how fragile are, are they at this point, Chef? Yeah, it's very fragile because we know use the legs. We know okay, so it's a little bit fragile because they're not using eggs, but they don't yeah. look very, they don't look too fragile. So don't worry, guys, if you make this yourself. Okay, we put a little mozzarella. Yeah. Okay. And we start uh, to toss. Okay. We put all together. Yeah, so, so, when they when, can flip. When you when you don't know when you know flip, you use the spoon. Okay. But. Uh, the spoon, you don't need to use a stainless steel. Okay. The so using a, the wood a wooden spoon. spoon. Wooden the spoon. wooden spoon Got is it. more perfect. Okay, when the mozzarella is start the melting. Okay. Copy. You see the mozzarella start the melting. Yeah, I, I do, yes, I see it starting to melt. So it literally melts into the tomato sauce and they become one big emulsified sauce. I actually yeah. had this in Sorrento. Uh, a beautiful yeah. woman named Conchetta made it for me. And yeah, she made this nice. exact sauce. Conchetta, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and Sorrent you I think Sorrento Positano is the best gnocchi because the gnocchi is a burn in Costiera Amalfitana. I think Sorrento Amalfi is the best place in Italy. Not only the best food. Okay, the most beautiful place in Italy. It is. It's absolutely stunning. When the mozzarella is melting, you put a little parmigiano. Okay? Okay. Little parmigiano. You see? The mozzarella is ready. Okay. And so the is sauce is tomato sauce, basil, mozzarella, parmigiano now. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Okay. And that looks like about two okay. cups all together. Yeah. It's very important you coat all the gnocchi in the sauce. Oh, look at that. Look at that cheese, the stringy <laughs> cheese. Beautiful. Oh my God. I know, right? Oh my God. It's so good. There's a question. It's my mama making gnocchi. <laughs> you have to be a good boy for mama to make gnocchi. Maria Apurle wants to know, can you freeze the dough? Can you freeze it, Chef? Yes, yes. yes. So you make it. You yes, make it. you can. Okay. Stay for at and least one month in the freezer. One month in the freezer. You can freeze it uh, in the gnocchi form also. It freezes very well. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. How much does that sell? Uh, is that on the menu tomorrow night at Gnocchiria? Of course. Yes, of course. Ah, very nice. Uh, I'm going to guess $18. <laughs> All right. Seth, the, the question from no, Seth is, is the recipe for... I'm sorry for you. I, you should be, because <laughs> I have nothing to eat here. <laughs> I have just a bottle of water. You have gnocchi, you have wine, you have cigars. We, we, have, a, we have another sauce. In, uh... Nicely done, nicely done. Rocco, we have another sauce in, uh, in the menu. We, okay. have a pesto, we have a pesto sauce. Pesto, got yeah, it. This is a pesto I just make it. Look, very All green, right, so very fresh. What, okay. what do you put in your pesto, Chef? Okay, my pesto is a very simple, very easy. Only pinoli, roast pinoli, pine nuts, pinoli. See? Okay. Yeah. Before I make a pesto, I roast the pine nuts. Got it. Yeah. Fresh garlic, fillet garlic. Got it. Yeah. The fresh basil. Got it. Oh, oh my God. Profumo, I profumo. I love a basil. I love it. Okay. After this one, look, I put like a for one pesto for one, two people, okay? Just mm -hmm. a little pinoli, you see? A little pinoli. Yeah. Okay. One garlic, two little okay. garlic. I make like a squeeze with my hand. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah. Olive extra virgin d'oliva. Yeah. 
Looks like about a tablespoon of pine nuts, two tablespoons of olive oil, two cloves of garlic. This would be a recipe for two people, everybody. A lot of basilico, a lot of basilico, a lot of basilico, okay. a lot of basilico. Salt. This is mostly basil, right? Yes. Yeah. Salt, salt, a pepe, little pepe. You more, see? A little more salt, a little more pepper, as you desire. Okay. To yeah, your taste. With a lot, a lot of basilico, 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 basilico. Now, Can't put you it up, Carmen. Can't. Everybody have a blender now at home, you know? That's true, yes. Everybody has a good blender now. Yeah. They put everything in the blend, they start the blending. Okay. It's coming out beautiful. Piece. Like this. Yes, that looks absolutely beautiful. And you, you probably don't want to blend it for too, too much time. Don't worry about it. Somebody's wrong and uh, you make a lot of pesto, no worry. Put in a little container, something like this. Close and frozen. It's good for months. So it can freeze for months. Yes. It stays fresh in the refrigerator also. Yes, it does. Stays fresh for a long time. It's essentially uh, covered in oil, so the oil uh, doesn't allow any air to get to it. All right, so if you're tired of the tomato sauce, we can do pesto sauce. How do we put it together, Chef? Hello. Okay. Same thing with the gnocchi. Yep. You put in the water. So we're using the same water. We can use the water a few times. Yes. Yeah. Ma Megan Gunn is asking, can you make it put it in the fridge until tomorrow? Yes, can you refrigerate till tomorrow? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Megan, thank you for the question. Aaron agrees that Aaron Weissman from New York City agrees that it freezes really well. In yes, gnocchi form. Does. I would say freeze it raw, not cooked, Aaron. That would be my response. Freeze it raw and cook it from frozen. Okay, now we're gonna put it together. Between, between the marinara sauce or tomato sauce and pesto, you know mm -hmm. put pesto before in a pan. Ah, okay. Because it's coming black, it looks nasty. You know, when okay. you put the gnocchi inside, you put the pesto. Okay. You understood that, I right? Forgot something yes, so, so, so the, the pesto goes in after the gnocchi, not, not before, okay. like okay. unlike every other sauce, because it's a fresh, thing, raw sauce. Another thing I forgot to tell you, in the pesto, mm -hmm. a lot of, I, I, it's not my ingredient. A lot of people, you know, like cheese, always allergic to cheese. Do you know why I don't put the cheese in the pesto? My put the why? I was going to ask cook. you. I put the cheese when I cook. Because somebody, a lot of people come in like me. I don't eat the cheese. Oh, I don't want the cheese. When I have a pesto with no cheese, I put the cheese when I cook. Understood. Okay. So m okay. most people the put ready. cheese and okay. You see the gnocchi coming up is ready. Yes. It literally it takes two together. minutes. It's amazing. You put the spoon of pesto. One and a half. We try and make a little water the gnocchi. Come in and make a little water from okay. the gnocchi. You try to put some of that water so, into the into So the So don't drain it 100%. You want a little bit of the cooking liquid. That's going to be essentially the base of your sauce. Exactly. Yes. Got it. Capito. 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 Capito, chef. Little water, okay. <laughs> the cooking liquid is actually a great base for many sauces for pasta and for gnocchi. Yes, it is. Every time you use a spoon with a boat spoon. Wooden spoon. Look what's Understood. green, very green, look, look. I see, it's beautiful. Chef, there are questions on how you keep it so green. How do you keep the pesto so green? <laughs> Do, do you put chlorophyll inside? No, no, it, forget. no, no, forget. I know, I know, I know. I want to finish the recipe before I put in everything. <laughs> I want to right now. I want to right now. Parmigiano, Parmigiano, Parmigiano. Yeah. See? So Parmigiano separately. Okay. Oh, beautiful, look. beautiful. That looks really beautiful. I now mean, my mouth, my mouth, there's a puddle underneath my mouth. It's been watering for 20 minutes now. 
It's amazing how simple these dishes are and how delicious. It's the lesson of Italian food. Look at that. Wow. Oh Very my good. goodness. Now I answer the question for the green. Okay. For decoration with the little pine nuts, you see? Pronti per mangiare. Buon appetito. Si vede, si vede. Wow. In the past. Questi Service. Rocco, <laughs> questi gnocchi parlano. It's beautiful. Voglio it's really speaking to me too. Vogliono venire da te. Take a good look at that, guys. Take a good look. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing. Rocco, for make si. a pesto, a little green like this, I cook the basil before I make it. Oh, you do? Yes. Wow, okay. All right, I so a quick blanch. Uh, I put the hot water. When it broils, yeah. I put the basil inside. I take it off in two seconds. I yeah. put in the ice, and the basil leave a green forever. Wow, amazing. So you, you blanch it quickly, and then you probably squeeze all the water out very dry. Yes. And it stays That's fresh. amazing, stays Mikhail, nice that's amazing. Good. That's a pretty classic technique on making any basil liquid or basil oil. Uh, okay, so Kevin is asking, how long do you recommend blending it for? Kevin, as little as possible, the more you blend it, the hotter it will get and the more brown the basil will become. I would say blend it just enough to get a fine paste. Chef, jump in anytime if you disagree. Quando lo ponen in el blend, stupido, no lo, fa, no lo deve fare por to, troppo tempo. No, no, you see when it's coming a little more liquid, you know, the brandy not very kill. It's not coming Essentially, in, like, blend it until it's a liquid, until it liquefies, and then stop. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Don't overdo it. So, oh. so Kevin, you're, the question that you're asking is hard to answer in a specific time, but it's less than a minute or two, not more than three, four minutes. Yes. And if, and if, you, if, the, you can, if your basil and pine nuts are not moving, add a little more oil to make it more liquid. Yes, perfecto. Exactly. So for the person whose ba who's basil and pesto turns dark, you're either um, heating it up too hot or you're over blending it. Because it's a, the, the pesto is a fresh one. When you blend it or, or something, when it coming out, is the, the, the temperature, it make it dark. Chef Karen wants to know how many basil leaves you use? <laughs> one pound. Quando foglie di basilico use out. Depends on many plate. <laughs> Karen, I'm gonna guess um, we would never count by leaf. We, so but I'm gonna guess bunches. 75 leaves. 75 leaves. No, so but, uh, the way they sell it in the supermarket. Bunches. Yeah. So that's so probably good. two ounces. Two ounces of basil right there. Yes. So in the professional world, we weigh our herbs. We weigh everything, especially our, our herbs. Uh, Chef Karen says the pesto looks very thick. Is that the proper consistency? No, is uh, because uh, look, it look perfect to me. Because I know, but I go around. You see? Yeah. This is my. Uh, you know why? When I put in the paint, I put a little water. Yes. You know, as long as I need to yes. put some more oil, and the people no happy. Understood. You want it like a paste because you use the water from the gnocchi as the base. As a thinning, a thinning agent and base of the it's sauce. Exactly. It's called, it's called pesto, which means paste. It's literally supposed to be a thick paste. And then when it, you toss it with a gnocchi, it should gather around the gnocchi and not pool at the bottom of the plate. So Karen, I know you think it looks thick because it adhered to the gnocchi, but that's really the way it should be. It shouldn't be a pool of sauce and then naked gnocchi on top. The yes. gnocchi should be covered in the sauce, sticking to the gnocchi. Okay, chef, quattro formaggi. Quattro formaggi. Now we're gonna do a four cheese sauce. This is super indulgent. Yes. We have a same thing, water broil, gnocchi side, okay? This one, we need to cook the sauce before the gnocchi coming up, okay? Amazing how he's cooked the gnocchi fresh each time for each sauce. He didn't cook them all in advance. It's so easy to make. 
this little these heavy gnocchi. Cream. Little heavy cream. Mozzarella. Okay, heavy cream. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Fontina cheese. Fontina. Wow. Okay. So, an, so we have mozzarella, which is cow's milk. Fontina is also cow's milk. A goat little bit cheese. more aged. Goat cheese. A parmigiano. You know, somebody parmigiano don't like Reggiano. It, somebody don't like goat cheese, use a gorgonzola, blue cheese, something like, something is wrong. Okay, so you can, you can put any cheese you want. Something with a little sharpness to it. A little acidity, like goat salt, cheese. Salt. Enough. A black pepper. Okay. Beautiful. We start. Look at that. When it's all together, it's coming like uh, all together, like a cream, like fondue. Da. fondue uh -huh. da. So you're making a fondue essentially of cheese, okay. or like a fonduta. And this is time the sauce start to cook. I think it's ready in two three minutes. But the gnocchi is coming up. Look. Uh huh. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Pick up a gnocchi. Put in the sauce. Notice the tool he's using. It's a skimmer. Very important that tool right there. A fine okay. mesh skimmer. Not not expensive, by the way, guys. If you want to invest in it, it's probably less than twenty dollars. You see, you you look at the sauce. It's very liquid. Yes. Okay. I see the sauce is very liquid now, very hot. And the two seconds, it's coming dry. Take a little more Parmesan, put in top. Make a round. And one minute is coming very thick. Thanks. I don't think anyone's going to complain about a lot of cheese sauce, so don't worry, Michele. Yeah, I think you're good. Chef, Karen, Karen wants to know, Chef, why you use a wooden spoon? This is a very good question. Because it's a mess with the pesto. Because a wooden spoon is a mess with pesto and? <laughs> when I use the stainless steel. Oh, no, no. I, but you prefer wooden spoons normally, right? I prefer wooden spoon, yes. And why do you prefer them? Okay. Uh, the really, I think it's more with the pain. The, you know, look, when you use a stainless steel, it, it scratches the you pan. Scrape, I don't it like, scratches the yeah. pan, yeah. When you use it, uh, the wood, it's not scratch the pan. It, 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 it tastes I better. It's more, you see? Yes, it's more I like it. the food. I think it's more healthy. Yeah, I understand. It tastes better. Yeah. So, Karen, the, the answer okay. is that it tastes little, better, it doesn't scratch the pan, it's a little more natural. Okay. It's ready. Now we're tossing the gnocchi. Notice at the end of each dish of gnocchi, he tosses that. Very important to glaze the gnocchi with the sauce. Okay. He's ready. Yes. Beautiful. My two favorite things, cheese and potatoes together. My God. <laughs> Look now. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Lord, oh Lord, look at that. Look at that. Wow. This is my so, favorite, my favorite, absolute I, favorite dish. I believe you, I believe you. So Bridget Stoiler says she wants this so bad. Chef, you might have to mail her some. She's a college student and she's excited to spend money on delicious food again. Where is she? We'll send it to her. Bridget, where are you? We'll send it to you. Okay, and Laura local. Cummings also saying the same thing. Looks beautiful, <laughs> Chef. My goodness. Yes. I think you got jealous now. Look. <laughs> I was jealous after the first one. Flag. Italian flag. Oh, yeah. Red, white, and green. There you go. Nicely done. Looks beautiful, Chef. Absolutely beautiful. What did you put on top of the uh, gnocchi, the white, the cheese gnocchi? Black, black pepper. On top? Okay, cool. And basil. No, basil is just, just a little just to bit. Just decorate. And the top Chef, of the pesto is, uh, is uh, pine nuts, basilico. 
Amazing. These are beautiful. It's really incredible to see how easy okay. it is to make wanna, from scratch. Yes. I want to, Rocco, I want to do something everybody. The gnocchi is a possible make any style in this world, any style, any taste. You put, an, when you make a gnocchi, potato flour, you put any ingredient in the gnocchi, it's coming good. You understand? Understood. Any style, any flavor. So it's a, it's like, a blank canvas. It's a blank canvas. And when you are mixing the potatoes with the flour, you can actually mix uh, okay, pureed spinach. Let's go, let's go this one. I make very easy, simple. Like okay. you make gnocchi with potato flour, you want to taste the mango, you put the mango inside. You want to okay. taste the spinach, you put the spinach. You want to taste the uh, strawberry, you put the strawberry. You want to wow. taste the uh, truffle, you put the truffle. I want to taste Anything. truffle. <laughs> Anything. And I that's know, inside the gnocchi when you're mi mixing yes. the dough. When you're making so it gnocchi dough. So gnocchi is very, very uh, forgiving. A blank canvas, you can add any flavor you want to it while you're mixing the dough. Chef, we have a lot of questions. Okay. We have a lot of questions. Are you ready for questions? Jennifer wants to know how much basil in the pesto? What is the proportion of basil in the pesto? Proportional of the ingredient or the... Of basil, basil. Basilico. Basil. One bunch of basil, you make one plate, one plate and a half. So one bunch, which is two ounces, Jennifer, yes. makes a portion and a half. One bunch, about two ounces. Depend how many pesto you like too. You like a lot of pesto, you like less pesto, but you want to make a longer pesto, you put a little more oil, a little more water when you cook. Copy that. Okay. Uh, the next question, Chef, is from Mary Herbstrit. How long do you toast the pignoli? Stove top or pignoli. oven? I'll show you. Look, it's very easy. Take the pan. You put it in the, you put it in the gas. So right. stove stove top, Mary Habstrit. He's using the stove top. And from my experience, it takes about six to eight minutes, depending on how many handfuls you throw in that pan. You put the very put the in the pan. You see when it come in, this color a little brown. I think it's like uh, two minutes. Okay? okay, you take it off. So with a very small amount in a large pan, about two minutes. If you put a little bit more, it would take a little bit longer. Chef, yes. Josh Minter wants to know, before the pandemic, how many potatoes did you use a day <laughs> at Nyokiria? How many potatoes? Okay. How many cases? No, I don't know how many cases. I told you how many portions. <laughs> I told you how many portions of the gnocchi, yes. Okay. It's very easy. Thousand, thousand gnocchi every day. Wow, a thousand every day, Josh. A thousand every day. We that is incredible. People, we have four people, eight hours for day, only producing gnocchi. Wow. So Gina is making fun of the four cheese sauce, saying it's very healthy. I said, if you want healthy, maybe get the pesto sauce. Don't do the cheese sauce. <laughs> Chef, someone wants to know if you have any recommendations on what kind of heavy cream and what kind of cheese to buy. Listen, the Parmesan cheese always is good. Fresh mozzarella, uh, you know, fresh mozzarella, like a fior di latte, buffalo mozzarella is okay. Fontina cheese is a cheese like, uh, you know, uh, Italian cheese like uh, very, very soft. Okay, yeah. soft cheese. Soft, ripened, aged cow's milk. I don't, have a, I don't have a really brand for uh, heavy cream because almost it's all same, trust me. Okay. So the good thing about Italian ingredients, if you're using authentic Italian ingredients, it's always going to be good. They have to be authentic Italian 100%. ingredients. The secret to the gnocchi is the oil like extra virgin de oliva. There you go. So there you go, Josh. As long as you're buying authentic Fontina from Italy, Parmigiano Reggiano from Italy, uh, and other cheeses no, from Italy. Rocco, no Parmigiano. Yeah. Parmigiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Ah, right. Yeah. Not Parmesan. British, 
make sure it's by, by Parmigiano, no Parmesan. Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmesan is actually a marketing term yes. used to describe fake cheese. It's used to describe fake Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if it comes in a can, it's not Parmigiano Reggiano. No, no, no. no. Parme <laughs> Parmigiano Reggiano is, is more expensive, of course, but you yes. use a lot less. You use very little yes. of real Parmigiano because it's aged and it's, of course, the process is very unique. There's no other cheese like it. So one ounce of Parmigiano Reggiano goes a long way, especially if you grate it on a microplane. You get one cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano from one ounce. I've done that experiment, Chef. So I also want to make sure you guys know that we have um, a contest called Post Your Plate. If you post a picture of any of these recipes that you've prepared at home, yourself, of course, don't just pull an image from Google, uh, and you tag Diner on at Home, downtown New York City. Uh, we'll put the instructions in the, the uh, chat box. Um, there will be a 30 minute, the winner will get a 30 minute cooking class with Chef McKinley. Uh, check out the chat box for all the details. Okay, Chef, we have a lot of questions. Are you ready? Let's go. Any, thank you. So Karen says, thank you, makes a lot of sense. Assuming this is the same pesto that you could put on bruschetta. Yes. Can you use this pesto on any, okay, yes. great. Yes, So you can yes. use this pesto for anything. For anything, for sandwich, for lobster, yes. Bridget saying she's usually in Brooklyn, but now she's in New Jersey. Bridget, is this going to be enough to bring you to Manhattan? The Gnocchia opens tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, Laura is going to fight Bridget for the gnocchi, so you're going to have to make a lot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Everybody's saying thank you. Looks delicious. Grazie. How do you feel about how do you feel about pesto con le noce if you can't eat pine nuts? Uh, you know, Abe is the same family. Pine nuts and uh, noce is the same family. But uh, uh -huh. I try is very good. But uh, uh, what I like is with the pistachio. Oh wow, yes. Pistachio pesto is amazing. You can actually buy it pre made. No pistachio They're Italian pesto. companies. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold no? on. No pistachio no. pesto. It's okay. a different thing. Basilico pesto, yes. no pine nuts with little pistachio. Okay, got it, guys. All right. So the question was, can you use walnuts instead of pine nuts? Chef says yes. And in fact, he likes pistachio even better than walnuts. Okay. Yes. Uh, any recommendations on tomato sauce brands? Kevin wants to know. <laughs> I love a pilot tomato. Peeled tomato, tomato, yeah, the candy peeled tomato, or sherry, or sherry tomato. But okay. the peeled tomato, when uh, when you open the can, you put it in yeah. the bowl, and squeeze with the hand, squeeze okay. with the hand. Okay. Okay. Any brands? Any I any know brands Lavalle. that you like. La Valle. I love this. La Valle, La Valle. Okay. Yes. I've used those as well. They're fantastic. La Valle. Seth, Chef Seth wants to know if you use the basil stem as well as the leaves. Only leaves. Only leaves. So Seth, there are some herbs that you can use the stems of, like cilantro, uh, chervil, uh, but not basil. I find that basil stems don't really have a lot of flavor and they can get pretty woody. No, I don't like Thank cilantro. Thank you too, Mary. I don't like the Chef Barbara wants to know if you don't have a moulinette, a potato ricer, how can you how can you prepare the potato if you don't have the machine? Okay, okay squeeze the more so more possible with the hand, or like uh, like when you make a mashed potato. So like use a, a potato masher. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But try and make a mash with the little as much flour. as possible with with mash it with some flour by hand. And then use a potato masher. What about a grater? What about a box grater? Would that work? No, it's coming a very. Okay, grater won't work. No, not inside. It was just a little gluing. Gluing. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, do you have a favorite brand of olive oil, chef? El olive. 
brand di olive. Se tiene uno favorito che no. ti piace. Olio è che sta vegine di oliva? Se qual compagnia. Ah, è a lot of good oil, uh, Rocco. A lot of... Wow, that's amazing. Because 20 years ago you could not say that. 20 yeah. years ago there was no good olive oil. Now we no, are blessed. Now we have a real... Brand. It's very hard to tell what is bad or what is not bad. It's a lot of brand. The cheap one, the good one, yes. De Checo. So a good, a good and expensive brand is De Checo. Got it. Yes. Don't forget, we are doing this today to support downtown restaurants and very specifically the Gnocchiria GoFundMe. The GoFundMe goes directly to Gnocchiria's employees and will help them get through these last four months and hopefully get them back to work. The details are in the chat box. If you want to donate, it will go directly to employees. All right. Uh, Mary says, grazie mille. Bridget says she's coming for sure. Grazie. Uh, let's see, another question. Uh, Di Cecco, okay, got it, got it. Uh, someone said they'll see you at Gnocchiria tomorrow. It's anonymous. And Mary Apu Aperle wants to know if you can freeze the dough for later. I think we, asked, we answered that earlier, and yes, you can freeze the dough. Chef, would you freeze the dough or the gnocchi itself? No, I consider the freeze of the gnocchi, not the dough. So you make the gnocchi and then you freeze it. I yes. agree, I agree, that's the best way to with, do it. Uh, with a uh, little more extra flour, it's uh -huh. not good to get it. It doesn't stick. You know, stick. Got it. So you toss the, the made gnocchi in flour and then you freeze it probably on one layer on a sheet pan and then you no, cook it from frozen, right? Yes. You don't have to defrost it. Yes. And you don't have to put it on a flat. Another on thing, a flat sheet you either. need to go in a flat sheet, you know, one by one, you wait for frozen for put it together. Understood. So you, if you put it on a flat sheet, and once it's frozen, you can consolidate. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much, Michele and Anissa. Grazie. Uliano, Uliano, please, uh, I plan to come see you very soon. Everybody who's Grazie. listening and watching, please go to Gnocchiria. The address is in the chat box. It's downtown on Wall Street and Bridge, I believe, is the corner. Uh, we will be posting the recipe. We'll be posting, uh, I believe, a video or at least photos. Don't forget the Post Your Plate uh, Instagram contest. And don't forget that all proceeds go to the GoFundMe for Gnocchiria directly to their employees. Grazie. Gnocchiria Wall Street is located at 100 Broad Street in Manhattan. And... Uh, Hopefully I'll catch you there when you come visit. I can tell you it's been very fun cooking with Michele and Anissa. Uh, if their restaurant is half as fun as they are, it'll be a great time. And they have a beautiful rooftop dining experience that will be, uh, be available as of tomorrow night, 5.30 p.m. You can see it on the screen, all the directions uh, to uh, donate to their GoFundMe. Uh, don't forget the next demo is July 9th with a not from Time Restaurant, another downtown great, uh, greatest hit. And please, uh, please check out the tile that's on the screen now. It gives you directions and a link to support Gnocchiria staff by making a direct donation to their team. You can see the instructions in front of you right now. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Downtown Alliance appreciates the opportunity to support local businesses and hopefully support your enjoyment of those businesses. My name is Rocco Despirito. This has been an absolute treasure. I look forward to seeing you on July 9th. Have a good night, everybody.